Um, yes, thanks for the introduction. I'm Simon. I'm a PhD student at uh, Zealand University at the Compiler Design Lab of Sebastian Haag. And um, so let me start off with a question. So have you come across a loop that Clang could not vectorize, but ICC could, or GCC could, for example? Has that happened to you? Yes. Yes? Very good. You're the right talk now. So <laughs> you're not alone. Um, so someone sent this on the mailing list. So subject was auto vectorization of outer loop. This was uh, May this year. And this is a uh, clang choice algorithm to evaluate Chebyshev polynomials, which is like Horner scheme kind of evaluation. And um, so Clang would not vectorize it. ICC could. And actually, this was tested with um, Clang 3.8. And today, Clang still cannot vectorize it, actually. So, but the region vectorizer, which is what I'm developing, can, actually. So, how do you do that? Well, you take the same code. And then you run Clang, you load our shared library, our region vectorizer, and then you tell it to loop vectorize. And what you get out is um, a speed, speed up over ICC, actually. So this is with um, Clang 4.0. And you see here scalar and R3, which is identical because R3 won't vectorize anything. And then ICC is um, 3.2 times as fast. And we are about 3.5 times as fast, so faster than ICC on that particular loop. So, great. But what is the problem with Clang here, actually? So why won't it vectorize that? And the problem is that LVM's loop vectorizer is, in a way, very basic. So it can only handle loops. OK, we're interested in vectorizing loops, so that's not a problem. But it has to be an inner loop, an innermost loop. And it has to be a single basic block loop. OK, and if there's any control flow inside the innermost loop, it will if convert it all into a single block, basically. And then on top of that, you only support very basic reduction patterns. And then you have this very complex interdependent code base, which has kind of grown over the time. So things are about to change. That's good news. Um, there's a vplan proposal by Intel. And what's happening is um, that in the vplan, what you do is you don't just transform, you don't just vectorize, but you have plans called vplans, right? So let's say we got this. Um, control flow here, this loop here on the left, which is actually a nested loop, two-level loop, and we want to vectorize it. So there are various ways to do it. And the, in the spirit of the VP plan, what you do is you say, well, let's just make a plan. Let's just assume we're going to vectorize it to a width of four. So if this is blue here now. This is not actually transformed IR. This is just a plan saying, OK, if I were to vectorize this loop here to a width of four, this is what I would get. And then you can have another V plan where you say, you know what? Now let's just say, let's assume we're going to vectorize this uh, with a width of eight, and we're going to if convert control inside of that. And then you just go ahead, you generate plans, you pick a plan, the plan which has kind of the best cost, which is optimal in whatever your sense of optimality is. And then um, you execute it, and actually only when you execute it, you start transforming the IR generating code. So that's that's the V plan, that's where we are going now in LVM. Um, so what's the goals of vplan? So the idea is basically to have these plans, which is um, a way to express various kinds of vectorizations. So this is about setting up infrastructure for vectorization. And the idea is basically to say, from now on in the future, if you're going to implement some kind of SIMD transformation, some vectorization transformation, uh, don't implement it on IR directly, but implement it on top of vplan, so you can optimize your loops with vplan. So short term, this will be outer loop vectorization, for example obvious target here. And midterm, this will also involve SLP vectorization. And then also various interleaf factors and, and so on. And um, so one milestone here is to support OpenMP 4.5 um, SIMD pragmas. So you can have pragma omp declare SIMD. So you can have whole function vectorization in Clang. And there was a talk last year by Hideki um, on that topic, but this was brought up on vplan. But in order to do, to support this pragma omp declare SIMD, what you need is whole function vectorization, because there you can say, you have a scalar function, you say, you put this pragma there, and then you say, vectorize this function for me so I can use it in a loop that I want to vectorize. So yeah, you need that. And the current status of vplan is actually, um, it's an infrastructure setup phase, so first patches have been committed, and it's basically, yeah, about getting infrastructure ready to express various ways of vectorizing a loop. But currently, it's based on the loop vectorizer, so it shares its limitations. 
Now the point here is basically, so the region vectorizer, or RV how we call it, actually already supports outer loop vectorization and whole function vectorization natively. So might be interesting to look into that. Um, so what is RV? So RV is a whole function and outer loop vectorizer, but it's not two separate pipelines, it's one pipeline, and it can just do both. And it's got strong analysis and transformations, and it's um, designed to be robust. I mean, it's, it's kind of a research project, so we wanted to be able to vectorize any control flow, for example. At the same time, we want to understand this thoroughly, so we want, we want to come up with a clean and simple modular API so we can experiment uh, with different vectorization schemes and transformations. And it's open source since last year. Um, so it's a GitHub, so try to check it out. It supports LVM 4.0 at the moment, but we got 5.0 and um, upstream uh, master support coming up. So yeah. But okay, whole function and loop vectorization, uh, aren't those two separate paradigms? Like two camps that work on different areas? Um, as it turns out, it's actually not too different, as you might have guessed by now. So take this example here. On the left, you have a function, and say you want to vectorize that. So when you call the vectorize function, it will basically have the effect of the scalar function four times or eight times. Um, on the right-hand side, um, you see basically the same code in a loop and it's executing vectorization factors, so VF, many times, that code. And now, one way um, to do whole function vectorization um, is to say, okay, why not, okay, we have the scalar function here, so let's just wrap the loop, the function body, sorry, in a loop, and then have our outer loop vectorizer vectorize it. So in the end, we will end up with a vectorized function, right? So that works, yeah. But there's a bit of a problem here. So what, what happens if your scalar function actually has, say, a float argument? And now in your vector function, you want to have a float eight, so a vector of eight floats. So that will work. At least not directly, not natively. So you can, that's actually what has been proposed in the vector on pass patch. Um, so you can go the other way around, which is if you're from camp whole function vectorization, then you would say, okay, we can implement outer loop, um, sorry, loop vectorization in general by outlining the loop body. And then we whole function vectorize and we inline that back in and now we have a vectorized loop body. That's great. But what do you do about recurrences and reductions? So those will be phi nodes in the loop header, but if you outline the loop header, you probably end up with memory accesses. It will probably be, you get other cars and it's still not clear how to do that. And it's kind of awkward because you're kind of trying to work around the fact that you don't actually support loop vectorization, but just trying to make it work with the whole function vectorization. So that's not really that great either. So what we say, well, you know what? Um, do neither of these things, just, just to have region vectorization instead. And because if you look at it, what you have on the left-hand side in that function is you have one basic block. It's just a control flow graph, whatever the context is. On the right-hand side, um, you got a control flow graph. So it has a different context, but it's just CFGs. And we're just gonna call that a region. And for us, a region has a single entry, and it can have multiple exits, which need to be non-divergent, which means that control might not reach different exits from the entry. So if you are doing uh, loop vectorization now, if your region is a loop, as on the top, well then you can have, for example, continuous statements but you cannot have divergent break. If you're in a function, um, that means you can have multiple return statements in uniform control flow. And then to RV, basically, um, these two things, loop vectorization or function, function vectorization, are al almost the same. So we don't differentiate that much between them in most transformations. So what's, how's it structured? So I said um, we had this modular, simple API. Um, so we got this stack of transformations um, that you can combine to build um, your own vectorizer. And just, let, let me just work through some of the features we have. So we have a base, steadily precise sync dependencies. So uh, sync dependencies might not tell you much unless you're in vector vectorization. It's basically uh, saying how value flow becomes divergent because of control flow diversions. It's where you link control flow diversions and, and, and divergions of values. And we have a steadily precise notion of that. Um, so I was uh, referring to recurrences earlier. We do support conditional reductions and recurrences. So you can have, like here, a varying condition which says, okay, if B, I is less than zero, then let's just accumulate some value on A. So that's supported. 
Um, we also have support for wavefront intrinsics. Um, so you can have predicates like, okay, is, does PI evaluate to true for any of the threads, which I'm vectorizing here? If that is so, let's just execute that part, otherwise we're gonna skip it. And uh, we also support um, conversion of divergent loops. So a classic example here is a model dot uh, loop, where you do this fixed point iteration, and different threads will spin the loop different times, and we can, con can convert that in a uniform loop and vectorize that out of the box. And then also we um, have used sleeve, the sleeve vector model library, to um, vectorize libm functions, so sin, cos, whatever you have. And it's all built into a librv actually, so you can have it directly. Okay, that's great. So rv sounds great, but where's the downside here? So the downside is basically rv handled with care because it will just, um, you, you tell it to vectorize something, it will just do it. It won't ask any questions, it won't optimize, it doesn't have any notion of cost. So you, you put a progma there, or you apply our binary uh, exec executable, and it will, execu it will um, vectorize that loop or function no matter what. Without a cost model, you have to tell it the width and everything. And yeah, again, so no questions asked. It will not do thorough legality checking, it will just do it. It will give you the vectorized code. So, but now the upside is basically these parts are already well implemented in LVM, right? So LVM's loop vectorizer is an automatic vectorizer. It inserts runtime checks at all. It takes care of legality and it won't vectorize loops that are not safe to vectorize. So the proposal here is naturally to say, let's combine these efforts, right? We have the strong transformations analysis. On the other hand, we have the strong legality checks and experience and uh, well-tested runtime uh, implementation. So, Let's build an extensible vectorization infrastructure based on vplan and RV. And then for vplan or RVM loop vectorizer, we're gonna take uh, the cost modeling, we're gonna take the legality checks, runtime checks, and this whole loop vectorizer part, the whole automatic vectorization part. And then from RV, uh, we're gonna take our divergence analysis. We're gonna take whole function vectorization based on regions. And we'll have partial linearization, which is an optimized if conversion scheme. And uh, also, I didn't mention that, but we also optimize um, data layouts of other cars, so we can have struct of uh, array of vector transformations of other cars. So let's combine that, and we're going to start here at the divergence analysis. And um, so here's a little uh, another result we have. So um, we have a ray tracer, and we vectorize that. So this is a scalar code base, and it's vectorized with RV. And we're comparing here against Embry, which is basically a manually vectorized gray tracer by Intel. So it's basically intrinsics, vector intrinsics, and specific to um, yeah, Intel x86, AVX, AVX2, and so on. On the other hand, we have our scalar code base, which is automatically instantiated for the ray tracer. May I have your attention, please? So thank you. Um, we had a short delay. I hope everybody had time to get some fresh air. Um, so, I was talking about our proposal to combine vplan and RV into one unified vectorization framework for LVM. And we're going to start the divergence analysis. And so, I give you some stress test example how strong our divergence analysis is. And um, so, that is Rodent, our ray tracer, which has a scalar code base um, that is automatically vectorized with RV to different platforms for. Um, and we show here results for AVX2, and we're comparing against um, the Embry ray tracer by Intel, uh, which is written in intrinsics, so vector intrinsic code specific to AVX2 in this case. And this road ray tracer has been written um, by Asen Peragayo, um, who is a PhD student in our computer graphics department. And as you can see, so we're um, showing the results on the right. So rodent is orange, Embry is blue, um, there's three variants of this code. Uh, which is different ways to vectorize uh, traversal codes in general. So uh, Embry has a single and hybrid traversal implementation. There's no packet traversal implementation in Embry, at least for the target, there isn't. So, and we kind of um, on the same level here. So sometimes we're faster, sometimes we're slower, but it's the same ballpark in general. And I was saying this is a divergence, divergence and as a stress test. So we have in that code uh, 238 uniform branches. And um, so 32 of those I actually only have converted because of our optimized implementation, partial linearization. 
And this is a total of 24 vectorized functions with uh, 24 loops in them. So this is quite a compl complex control flow. And we get good results here. So, um, and so we're joining forces with Intel to um, get this into LVM. And the uh, design goal here is basically to uh, have no regressions um, with regards to the current state of the loop vectorizer. So we might be, um, we want to improve in the future, obviously, but for now it should be just even out. So we're on the same level here and then work from there. And we want to get our precise sync dependencies, our precise divergence analysis into that plan first. So uh, to conclude, um, so I showed you some of our results, what our plan is with this proposal, how we're planning to go forward. And Avi, Avi that's not being developed by me alone. So um, I got um, two students working for me on that, a bachelor master student who just, who just finished, that's Tost Plus and Don Matada. Then there's Azen who's written, written that ray tracer using Avi, and then there's me. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? Right. May I have your attention, please? You have it. <laughs> okay, that's it. Um, go to the VPlane talk later today at 4.20. Ayala is going to present the current state of um, VPlane. All right, thank you for your attention. like we can stay, so. Yeah, um, seems safe. Okay. Cool. Yeah, any questions? Let me ask something. So this VPLAN, so does it use like the traditional um, polyhedra analysis that is used is just SCAF, so, or what's the difference to poly? Um, our divergence analysis, so that doesn't use SCAF or poly. It's, um... May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Great. The operations and security department has investigated the alarm and has declared false. Please proceed with this method. Good news, and everybody. <laughs> um, and thank you for your cooperation. So, um, it's basically based on roughly, conceptually based on work by Ralph Kahnberg who has uh, worked on the whole function vectorizer. And then um, there's also some overlap with a divergence analysis um, in LVM. And what has been done by uh, Coutinho, there was a PAC 2011 yeah, paper, for example, please. on sync dependencies, yeah, where those, that notion was defined first, I think. The security department has investigated the alarm and has declared false. Please proceed with this. Any more questions? <laughs> Oh, yeah. What will be the dependence analysis uh, use eventually in this thing to ensure that uh, the loops are legal to be vectorized? Um, so right now, we don't have that in our V, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, we're going to use what's, what's a loop vectorizer and what's being developed in VPLAN. So this will be all new now. So this will be, yeah, Idiki can say more about that probably. Look, yeah. Okay, so the ongoing plan for enabling outer vectorization is just to ex start from extending the existing uh, dependence analysis in the LV so that it can handle the outer loop vectorization semantics. So that's the uh, starter. Yeah. There you go. Anybody else?